to my channel, this is Alex from Alex's Innovations. Today I'm going to be doing an updated bracelet collection. If you want to see my original bracelet collection video, feel free to check that out, it's in the description. But I've made a ton of bracelets since then. I've not only repeated some of the same bracelets, but I've also expanded my inventory. So just a reminder, all of the bracelets that you see here are available for purchase on my Etsy. You can find my Etsy at Alex Innovations, the link is in the description, and it would really help me out if you supported my business. And also, if you spend more than $35, you get free shipping if you live in the United States. So without further ado, let's get into it. I recently made an inventory from this Bigelow green tea box, and what I did was I just added little cardboard dividers, and so I can put the different types, like here I have my double Aztecs, here I have sort of random normal patterns, here I have Harry Potter and monochromatic, and so I'll go through all of them with you. So first, I will show some of the bracelets that you see in this video will be the same as the ones in the previous video because I have either not sold out of them or I've just made more. So these ones I'm quite sure that I shared these ones in my last video. So these are my double Aztec bracelets and I have a couple of color variations here. Um, this one is my favorite, it's called Rick and Morty and I actually made a tutorial on these if you want to check it out. But this one is, I think it's called Lost on Everest or something like that. Um, this one is Fire and Ice. Here is another Lost on Everest. I have the yellow and purple variation, and I have this pretty pink and blue variation. So all of these are available. Um, I do have a tutorial on these, but I love these because they're not that hard to make, and I think they're really pretty, um, especially with some colors if you get a good color combination out of these. Next I have my Harry Potter bracelets. These are Ravenclaw and Slytherin, and I do plan to remake Gryffindor and Hufflepuff soon. Next I have these really pretty monochromatic diamond bracelets. You can see the texture up here. What I did was these are simply normal diamonds, like if you were to create a normal diamond with multiple colors, but it's only just with one color. So what this does is it creates this really pretty texture in the back, which you can see. I also made a purple one, but it sold out. Oops. But these are the ones I have left. I didn't use a pattern for these, but I think each of these are 10 strings wide, I want to say. Next I have these thin Aztec ones. I call this variation pink and turquoise, and this one is rainbow, but I also have other variations available on my Etsy. But I like these ones, I probably should make a tutorial for these, but the pattern is 28009 on bracelet book I want to say. Um, and they go really quickly actually, they look like they're complicated, but they're actually, for me, they're quicker than a chevron because they're more interesting. I tend to get bored with simpler patterns, but these ones are really, really interesting and fun to make. This is a bracelet that I made. It's based upon my rainbow twist, but I actually made this based off of the colors of Blade Runner 2049, which was the movie poster. So I used turquoise tones and red and orange tones, and this is super, super pretty. I actually love how this bracelet turned out, but I also have made a rainbow version of it. I just don't have it in stock right now. This is a Gordian knot twist bracelet that I made, and it's just really satisfying for me to look at. I like how my knots are straight, um, which was the first time that I've made like sort of a Gordian knot where the knots aren't super duper wonky. <laughs> this is my neon rectangle bracelet, which hopefully you've seen if you watched my neon rectangle tutorial. This bracelet I made for the random color challenge when Masha Knots and I collaborated. This pattern was a little hard to make for me. There was just, it was too, too random for me. I didn't really like it too much, but it was really fun choosing the colors with her. Um, but comment down below if you have any other ideas for collaborations because I'd love to collaborate with her in the future. Masha, if you're watching this, do you have any suggestions? This bracelet I made using all gold metallic thread and then I embroidered a little DNA helix on it. And this bracelet I made a while ago, I think this was in my last bracelet collection as well, but it's a Harry Potter bracelet that is connected at the ends and then these sort of candy stripes separate and I made a tutorial for this one um, and it was really fun for me to make. And I probably should make more of these, but th I think this one's on my Etsy for like $7, like it's pretty cheap, so go check it out. These aren't bracelets, but I did crochet some scrunchies a while back, um, just, I, I made to like these four. Sometimes I just get like really random inspiration and then I just make things that I've never made before, like, so I made these scrunchies. I used to make these all the time in like sixth and seventh grade and then I grew tired of them when I cut my hair shorter and couldn't use them or they just grew out of fashion, but I have them in four colors, and I like these colors a lot together, but I like this black one especially, but they're all really cool. <laughs> these aren't bracelets either, but these are little chevron keychains that I made. This one has a holiday light because I made it around Christmas time, but the rest of them don't. These are chevron keychains. This is the first one that I made when I was still working out the technique on how to connect to the jump ring, but it's a little wobbly here, so that's why I didn't want to do that. And plus, I don't really like this tie as much at the end. I sort of like the more frayed technique. Then I made this equality keychain based on the human rights campaign equality sign which is a cause that i support wholeheartedly i believe in equality for all genders races ethnicities 
and sexual orientations, and so I thought that this was cool, and I actually might take this out of commission and put it on my own keychain because I like it so much. And then these sort of recycled rag rug fringe bracelets, they're very festive and party-like and it just is really nice. These are pretty easy to make too, and I guess I just got tired of making it, I think it was gonna be a bracelet, and then I got bored of making it, so I turned them into keychains. Back to actual bracelets, I made these bracelet sets a while ago. I think I made this one at a basketball game, because our school has this weird thing where if you miss a gym class, you have to go to a basketball game, or you have to go to a sports game, and for me it was basketball, and you have to write a paper on it <laughs> in order to make up credit for that gym class, which was a little crazy, so I made this bracelet during that class, and then I made this one a little bit later, because I liked the sets idea, although I've never sold a bracelet in a set before, so this is kind of new for me. <laughs> These ones are more sets that I made. These ones I made about two years ago. I, th I think I was on vacation and I sort of made them over the summer because I wanted to try something new and I also just didn't want to commit to doing a really long bracelet over summer break. Next I have these cute little candy stripe bracelets that I made. I made a tutorial for these ones um, and these are actually probably the easiest bracelet using this knotting technique that are used in all the other bracelets and this one only uses forward knots which is really really nice so it really helps you to learn the technique and here I have another one that I made. I think this one was supposed to be the same colors as this one and it just didn't work out that well. These bracelets are ones that I made using multicolored thread. Um, I believe that these two are DMC brand and then these two are another brand that I don't remember right now but this was these were fun to make and I also could not make these bracelets the same length because they're all different lengths so that was a little inconvenient for me to try and sell them. So they're just they're just chilling. Next are my rag rugs, which I think are the second tutorial that I've ever made. I've made so many of these. Uh, some of them are monochrome, like this one is orange. Um, this one's red, pink, and green. I enjoyed making these a lot. Oh, here's a purple one. The rest of these are rainbow, which are a great way absolutely fantastic way to use up your spare thread. I always save my spare thread from crafts because I always, sometimes I cut too much of them and then I feel terrible throwing it out and I just don't want to waste it. So these bracelets are absolutely beautiful. I love these so much and I make these all the time and this is, this is actually the second tutorial that I ever did. I believe on my channel so it's pretty old but feel free to check it out if you want because I had a lot of fun making these. Next I have these paracord thingies. Um, I made some sort of, what do you call them, I think they're called Solomon, Solomon knots or square knots, I'm not really sure, but I made these ones, these sort of simple keychains and then I made bigger ones and I call these ones grenades because, or maybe they look like beetles a little bit, but I call these ones grenades because they kind of look like like a grenade, like you could hold them like that. But I really like these because each of these has 10 feet of paracord thread in them, which is nice because if you ever get into an emergency, you can always just unknot the thread. There are, they're singed right here, you probably can't see, but they're singed right here, so you could always just flip this string over and then unravel it, and then you'd have 10 feet of emergency paracord. Then I have this trilobite bracelet that I made. This one's sort of more weaving than is knotting, but this one was really fun too, and I really like it, and because it looks like a trilobite. And I'm quite sure I showed this one in my last, in my last bracelet collection because I vividly remember trying to find a good picture of a trilobite to put it <laughs> next to this bracelet so here's that same trilobite. Next these are like two row trilobites. They're like trilobites but only two rows instead of the three that the trilobite have but I made this one with blue and I made this one with black and white. And finally we have sort of the traditional ones, the paracord ones. I haven't made too many of these because they're really really popular and solely selling for a lower price than I'd care to charge for mine so I don't want to make these unnecessarily, so I only have two of them. Next we have some big boys. This one is a 40 string monster. I think I made this one and then I sold it right before I filmed the bracelet collection. If I didn't sell it right before, then I sold it right after, but it was right around that time because I remember really wanting to show it. But anyway, there's that. I also did a time lapse on this one, so if you want to see me make it, go check it out. <laughs> Next I have this bracelet. This one is the logo for my channel, and it's in all of my profile pictures, and I really like this one. I also made a pattern for this one on bracelet book. This is actually not the bracelet that I took a picture of. It was this one actually, and the colors are a little bit brighter, but the ends, it's also much more floppy. This one's very, very floppy, whereas this one's kind of hard and rigid. I can't really do that as well, but this one's very, very floppy. This I made this one in 10th grade, I believe, two years ago. This one's so pretty. <laughs> Next, this is my giant rag rug bracelet because I think I just wanted to challenge myself like how big, like how much string can I really use and still make it a rag rug bracelet. So this one has 50 strings. This one is a thick boy and it also incorporates some weaving here. This is the back. The back looks really cool too, but 
I really like the front. I should do one of these in like camouflage colors because that would be really cool. Like a camouflage bracelet, that sounds really nice. And then a mandala flower bracelet, which I love so much. It's so pretty and it was the first time that I had ever made one of these little bracelets. But it's super cute. There's the back and there's the front. Next are all of my wish bracelets. Um, I have a listing for these in bulk on Etsy. So this is one of them. They're very thin and they're sort of twisted together like this and this is in, in comparison to the bracelets on my wrist. It's not that thick but they're perfect as party favors. They have little loops up here that you can tie these strings through like that. Each The strings at the end are knotted into two bundles so you can more easily tie it onto your wrist. But I sell these ones in bulk at a very very low price, cheaper than you would buy it if you were to buy it individually. I have most of these down here. I also have this bracelet, which I made a tutorial. It's a very easy sort of two knot bracelet that you can do if you're starting out. This one is a kumuhimo that I was making, but it's very long and it's also very neon. I don't know if you can see how neon it is, but it was also very lumpy. I didn't twist enough. I wanted it to be really twisty, sort of like this, and it wasn't. It was more like this, so. I didn't want to do anything with that, and also it took a really long time for me to make, so right now I actually make thinner kumihimas, which I don't have right now with me, but I do make them uh, made to order. You can order them in sets of two, and they're a really cute stackable set. And then I made these cute little bracelets, which I actually have one of them on me right now. These are little pearl beads, and that are woven into string with little pearls at the end of them so you can tie them onto your wrist, but these are also very, very cute, and I think these are like four dollars in my shop. but. They're very cute and I had so much fun making them. Here I have a seed bead bracelet. This one is was my first time making any sort of seed bead bracelet, but I just got a starter pack of like wire and clasps and crimp beads from Michaels and so I just wanted to try something, but it has this little clasp at the end. First time using a crimp bead right here. And then I made myself a little chain of jump rings, which I need to replace because I have no jump rings left. <laughs> this bracelet I just made like last week because I made a tutorial on it, which is sponsored by Downtown Bracelets. Go check her out. She actually gave me this really, really pretty multicolored thread and she gave it to me in like eight colors or something. I actually finished this one this morning, so this is hot off the press, but this is a pattern made by Claire Wear Spams and what it is is I actually knotted this side, so it took me a while because this is very, very confusing to see, especially when it's all with one color, but when you turn it around it looks so pretty so this is actually the back side and I'm using kind of the same technique that I used with my monochrome diamonds in that I'm knotting with all one color I'm sort of depending on the direction of the knots to give me that really nice te texture and it has sort of this curved edge with braids and it's very sparkly too I really like it and finally I also made this one this morning this is a Peruvian wave bracelet I was experimenting and I wanted to see if I could make these bracelets that are sort of woven and sell those in bulk, but I don't really like it too much for some reason. It's a little bit brighter than it appears on camera because these sort of end threads curve up, but let me know if you want me to sell them and I'll definitely make some. And then at the end it has these two little nice white ties that you can tie onto your wrist. So that's it. I hope you had fun watching my bracelet collection updated video. If you wanna buy anything that you saw in this video, the link for it is in the description or you can check it out on my Etsy. My Etsy is Alex Innovations. But thank you so much for watching guys. If you like this video and want to see more, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to keep the bracelets coming. Make sure you hit the bell that says all so you're notified for each one of my new videos. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. By contributing just a little bit each month, you can gain exclusive benefits like early access to my videos and bracelets shipped regularly to your front door. My Patreon is Alex's Innovations. The link is in the card and also in the description down below. I just want to give a shout out to my Patreon, Simon. They're amazing and thank you so much for supporting my channel. If you're not already, follow me on Instagram at Alex Innovations. I do polls and surveys there that I later feature in my videos, so by checking out my profile, you can help me make better videos. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.